Sarah Jaggard from the Australian Drug Foundation. This podcast features Sergeant Wendy Cowling talking about safe parties. Wendy works with Victoria Police's Youth Advisory Unit. Welcome to you, Wendy. Good morning. So, Wendy, tell us a bit about the Party Safe Program. What is it? Well, the Party Safe Program provides information to um, help minimise the risk of something going wrong at your party, um, such as intoxicated guests or gate crashes, and um, allows you to register your party with local police. So we're able to provide a form which is downloadable from um, the Victoria Police website, which is www.police.vic.gov.au, print it off, um, complete the form and then take it down to your local police station. What we do say is that you need to do that um, about two weeks prior to the party because that allows for rostering. Great, so it's just as easy as printing out a form and filling it out and getting it into your police station. At the present time, we hope to um, go online in uh, early 2012, but we're still in the testing phase where people will be able to fill it out online, submit it there, and it will um, then go off to the local police station. But um, as I said, that's still in the testing phase. Oh, that'll make life easy for everyone. Um, So what are some of the legal issues that need to be considered when holding a party? Well, you need to um, consider, obviously, whether you're going to have the party at home or whether you're going to have it um, in a local hall. Normally, um, councils do ask when they're hiring out their halls on whether it is going to be an underage, and so there would be a requirement that there is no alcohol being served. But um, we have to remember that um, young people are not able to um, consume alcohol in public places, so it's actually quite difficult for young people to get their alcohol to parties because um, they're unable to actually possess it as well. Um, Obviously we have to think about the um, drinking by young people under the age of 18 and we now have the new secondary supply laws which means that uh, you're unable to supply alcohol to a young person in your own home um, without having the permission of um, their parent or guardian. And of course we also have duty of care in regards to um, holding a party as well. So what does that mean when you talk about duty of care? Well, in regards to um, supplying the alcohol at parties, what we would actually suggest is that it's probably better that you don't supply alcohol to um, a party for young people because it can be difficult to actually um, watch what's going on. There are some tips that we also suggest in regards to that if you are thinking about supplying the alcohol that then obviously you need to have the permission from the parent but also having a responsible adult um, being the bartender for the night who's actually not drinking having alcohol only um, available from one particular location but more about providing non-alcoholic drinks Um, there's mocktails or you're providing Um, the low alcohol drinks um, and also fruit juices and water. The problem is when young people get themselves when they have too much to drink so either they may need hospitalisation so you probably need to actually plan when you're having a party what you're going to do if you find yourself in that situation. Obviously um, also if you do have um, the gate crashes come keeping an eye on what's happening and getting a feel for when it's getting out of hand. So you can ring triple O, obviously, first off for an ambulance if that is required, but also for the police to come. And if you have um, registered your party previously, then we already have the details of what's going on, which it makes it a lot easier for us. Mm. And police, if you wish, can cruise, will cruise by over the night and they can even pop in. Um, sometimes the deterrence of um, a uniform wa- walking through your party um, might have a desired effect. Okay, so Wendy, what sort of things need to be considered when people are planning a party? Obviously you need to think about your numbers and who you're actually going to invite and how you're going to invite those people. I would suggest that the old-fashioned um, invitation hard copy is probably the best way to go. I know our young people now like to use Facebook But it does, um, unfortunately, we've known that it does cause some issues if it gets a bit viral across um, the whole area. And so a hard copy is probably better. And actually stipulating the start and finish time of the party um, 
and so that parents know when to come and collect their young people, where you're actually holding it, advise your neighbours in plenty of time that you're actually going to have a party and how you'll cater for it. So um, good substantial food, keep away from the salty snacks because they encourage people to probably drink more. And whether you need security, a lot of um, our, we're finding now that the um, security is being engaged and they're at the, the front door and they can actually check on the guests that they are invited when they come in and obviously around your transport and whether there's going to be some young people staying over. I know that um, some parents worry about their duty of care and, and how far that extends. So do people hosting the party have a responsibility to ensure that um, guests get home safely after the party or does their duty sort of finish when the, when the party's over? Oh, we could say that would be a fine line. Um, I would think they would need to have put in some reasonable um, arrangements in regards to having the young people get home. What we find uh, normally is if there is no transport, the taxis are slow coming, the young people hang around, that's when glasses start to be broken, um, fights erupt and um, we get called. So um, hopefully the parents who've dropped their young people off will actually come and collect them as well. That's another tip for the parents of the party goers. Mm, for sure. And what about at the party? What sort of things do people need to bear in mind? As I said before, it's very important that we have um, substantial food provided for the party goers. Also the non-alcoholic drinks as well, which I mentioned before, um, mocktails, fruit juice and water so that it encourages people to have a break in between alcohol. Um, keeping the people entertained that can also be a, a problem for police is when the night gets a bit later. If you've got some music, you have to also be uh, conscious of um, times of having uh, loud music. So keeping it the noise to a minimum, especially after um, around midnight, normally on a Friday, Saturday night is when we start to get the calls for noisy parties so trying to keep the speakers away from your neighbours <laughs> and dealing with your problem behaviour early on when you get that feeling that something's not not quite right you need to actually ring um, police if you think that's the intervention that you actually need obviously having some um, responsible adults there to assist you at the party very difficult if there's only um, one or two adults so invite your uh, your friends to come along and assist you with that but obviously they have to keep sober as well. So people often struggle with whether or not to allow alcohol at a party. Do you have any tips on that Wendy? Well that is um, obviously the, the dilemma for people nowadays in spe especially with the new secondary supply laws. So I would say for a party for a young person under 18 it's probably advisable that you do not supply the alcohol. Um, Obviously, you know, young people will still find a way to get alcohol there. We know that happens. But um, you need to set those limits on what you want. And if you're not having alcohol, you need to um, make that quite strong in regards to what is going to happen. Um, have conversations with um, the other parents as well. Set it out in your invitation on whether alcohol is actually being allowed or not. Um, and then hopefully you'll be able to minimise that risk. Okay, so if, if alcohol is allowed at the party, what's the best way to prevent it being misused? I think I touched on that before. It's having serving from one area, having all the alcohol um, from that one bar, a responsible adult who isn't actually drinking, being the person who's serving it. Um, you need to keep on an eye on all your guests. So walking around through the young um, through the young people at the party, not um, sitting in the front room and allowing them just to do whatever. So um, that's probably the best way, or one of the best ways, but some people are very um, inventive in regards to um, some of the ways that they're able to keep an eye on uh, the young people as well. Fantastic, Wendy. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. For more information about alcohol and the new secondary supply legislation, visit the Teen Drinking Law website at teendrinkinglaw.vic.gov.au. This podcast was developed by the Australian Drug Foundation in partnership with the Victorian Department of Health and Vic Health. The content of this podcast is provided as general information only. 
It is not intended to be given as advice and should not be relied upon as such. If you are concerned about any issue raised by the podcast, then you should seek your own professional advice.